to remove an item from the list, I'm going to head back over to our shopping list.ts. And we can make ourselves a function named select shopping item. And we can give the user an option of perhaps editing the item, removing the item, or cancelling the selection. So essentially, we want to display an action sheet that gives the user the following options. Number one, edit the shopping item. Number two, delete the shopping item. Or number three, cancel selection. So in order to display this action sheet, what we need to do is head over to our constructor here and simply add a private action sheet of type action sheet. Now action sheet itself comes from Ionic Angular. Let's import that from Ionic Angular like so by saying import action sheet controller. Let's now display the action sheet to the user and we can do that by importing the action sheet controller from Ionic Angular. So when you've imported that, we can inject it here inside of the constructor by saying private action sheet control of type action sheet controller. So let's now make an action sheet. We can say this dot action sheet controller dot create and in here we can pass in the action sheet options. We can either make them outside of this action sheet or declare them inside of this object. Let's simply declare them inside of the object. We can first off show a title. Now the title for the action sheet should be equal to the shopping item that the user has selected. So in order to find out the shopping item that the user has selected, we need to pass in a shopping item of type shopping item. So now we have an appropriate reference. So we can say that the title should be equal to, I'm going to be using backticks here and a backtick allows us to use a template string. You can access the backtick by hitting the button next to Z on a Mac keyboard and one on a QWERTY keyboard. And we can simply say dollar. And then if we add the braces here, we can add a shopping item dot item name that allows us to get a reference to the shopping item name and then we can pass in particular buttons. So the first button, like we said, can have the text of edit. Each button can have a handler and what this essentially does is the handler allows us to define some functionality for when the user selects this button. For now, we will simply add a comment, which will be in the future, send the user to the edit shopping item page and pass the key as a parameter. Because if you think about it, that's what we're going to need to do. We're going to need to pass the particular shopping item on the list across to the edit shopping item page. And the user is, of course, going to be navigated to that particular page. We could certainly make this different by showing a modal or showing an alert controller. But for now, I think a nav control and sending the user away to a different page is a decent enough idea. After that, we can add another button. And that button will have the text of delete. It will have the role of destructive because this is essentially a delete button. And we can add a handler here. Which will delete the current shopping item. And the final button that we need to create 
is our cancel button. So let's add the text of cancel, the role of cancel, and the handler function in this circumstance will just be a console.log for the user has selected the cancel button. The final thing to do after all of this is to present the action sheet to the user. So let's hook up this shopping list so that now inside of our shopping list.html, the view for our shopping list, we can have a click event which selects the shopping item and we can pass through that item. By passing the item as a parameter, we have a reference to that particular shopping item. If we then navigate to the delete section inside of our action sheet controller, we can delete the current shopping item by saying this dot shopping list reference dot remove and then we can pass in the shopping item dot dollar key. And the dollar key is a reference to this key here. So when we remove this, we essentially remove it from our shopping list. But you will notice at this point in time, we do now have a red underline. And that's because it's saying that the dollar key does not exist on the type of shopping item. In this circumstance, what we need to do is head back over to our interface and in a more complex application, you may want to have a difference for a view model and a model where we would add the key to our view model only. But in this circumstance, we can get away with just adding a dollar key of type string. But if we add this question mark, the Elvis operator here, we're essentially saying that this key is optional so that when we create a shopping item, it's not necessarily required. Because there could perhaps be a certain circumstance where we don't have a dollar key. This example would be where we're creating it on our ad shopping page. But as you can see, at the moment, we're deleting the current shopping item. And that's passed in via the parameter. So let's add passed in via the parameter. So inside of our shopping list, I'm now going to select chicken because to be honest, I preferred it when we had 10 amounts of ice cream. So let's now select delete on chicken. You can see that the chicken has been removed from our list and also it's been removed from Firebase. No matter how many times we refresh Firebase or our application, it's been deleted from the database. So in this lecture, we've looked at adding an action sheet. We've also looked at adding different actions for our action sheet. So far, we've added the delete functionality inside of our Firebase database and our Ionic application. We've passed the reference of our shopping item. And I'm going to move this comment outside of the function like so. Let's take a look now at adding an edit shopping item page as well as updating our list.